So I used to just kind of think that um, God was awful and that maybe he was like my dad, really mean. And um, I couldn't really, I couldn't relate with any of that. And um, so I understand people when they get angry and they say, you're just scaring me and God is not mean. And I agree with you. <laughs> God is not mean. And it's not that he will do these things to you, but... I had a better understanding that God, God's justice is perfect, right? I also had a better understanding of um, my own imperfections and my own evil and the way that I get myself into trouble <laughs> without help, but also my desperate need for Jesus Christ, for his healing atonement and his help to stay out of trouble. and. Um, um, even if I could stay out of trouble, like, I had this awareness as well. I started to develop this very strange awareness, and this sounds really crazy. Maybe it is crazy. Um, but I started, I had some neurological weird, um, things going on, but I couldn't explain it when... I smell, I don't, I haven't had like this experience for a while, but I started to smell stuff that didn't make sense. And I had a dream that the Lord told me that I smelled, that, that my body was dirty, that my spirit was dirty. And it was a terrible stench. And I had found a scripture that talked about that, um, how the daughters, um, would be, would have a horrible stench, right? This is embarrassing to talk about. So, um, and that I needed to be washed. And um, that's how you get rid of the stench, is you have to be washed. But it has to do with wickedness, but you can't even live perfectly enough to not have the stench because I am living now even a way that I'm doing the best I can, I'm obeying commandments, but I, I can't eat bread, and I can go, like, I, I try not to eat the regular bread that's given in the sacrament, because I, it causes me to shake and have terrible physical pain, but so I had to go like a month without it, because no one, I couldn't find it in any of the churches I go to that they didn't offer um, an alternative. But I had a knowing one day, like a vision of some type, I looked in the mirror and I could see that I was dirty. Um, on top of that, um, I also have like this weird, I don't know how to explain them, but there was a shooting at Fort Hood in 2014, very near where I lived, I lived on the barracks. And, um, Oh, the demons are described as smelling um, really terrible, like poop. And um, where the shooting took place, when I would drive past this place, I would always smell this terrible, terrible stink, like dog poop. And um, I don't know, you explain it to me. I know that I have like issues. <laughs> I don't know. But um, since I am taking the sacrament, like I, I don't sense those things anymore about myself, at least. Um, and I haven't sensed it so much about, at least I haven't been back to Fort Hood, and Fort Hood is like, <laughs> although I shouldn't say that because it's been a while since I've been there, and I may go back. But don't be looking for me though. Anyway, um, um, that place in Fort Hood, there were, um, one of our soldiers, um, was mental, mental, it, it doesn't happen very often, but he killed three people and there were 10, 12 people severely injured. And I actually was warned the day before that to pray for my safety. Uh, was warned by a friend who sends emails every day 
that are scriptural to pray for my safety that Satan was coming to town. I don't know. And, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, spiritual things are difficult to explain. Uh, they seem like coincidences sometimes. Or, um, like the, the visions and dreams, like, I don't know sometimes how to put them in words because sometimes they're very intense experiences or experiences that can't really explain. Like, so, um, I wanted to also talk about um, Noah's Ark. And um, so this is in the Joseph Smith translation of Matthew chapter 1. And you'll only find this, of course, in the Latter-day Scriptures, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so likewise, mine elect, when they shall see all these things, they shall know that he is near, even at the doors. And so that's verse 39, verse 40. But of that day and hour no one knoweth, no, not the angels of God in heaven, but my Father only. But as in... It was in the days of Noah, so it shall be also at the coming of the Son of Man. For it shall be with him, them as it was in the days which were before the flood. For, it, for until the day that Noah entered into the ark, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall be, be fulfilled that which is written, that in the last days two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. So I had a dream uh, about a boat, and that I was on a boat, and hugging all these people, and I, I thought I knew them, but I didn't know them, so I don't know exactly what all that means, but I think it has something to do with this, this Noah thing. And in the last days, um, and but I wanted to talk more in depth about Noah and um, and his um, why the flood happened and how that correlates to our day and why it's so difficult sometimes to believe that the commandments are real or that God is good. Um, it is because of the wickedness of our day. Um, I read in, um, my church has some um, literature that helps people understand the scriptures, so I was reading on that and helped me to understand that um, the flood occurred because um, God loved people. And it, asked, it posed this question, like, how could a God kill even children, innocent children? And I said, how indeed? How indeed could God, and why? Why would he allow that? And then I had just had this crazy epiphany and understanding of my own life. And, and that is because when you grow up in wickedness, you, you learn wickedness, and that's what you know. And it's extremely difficult to learn otherwise like you learn you learn so your parents are like God and and that's what you learn God as being so if you think if your parents are really mean and and maybe they claim to to have some kind of religious affiliation any kind of religious affiliation then you will associate that with God and even if you don't you still associate them with God because they're God-like figures to you and so it's extremely difficult to imagine a loving God and that that judgment isn't because God is thrusting you there but because he you you wouldn't like being with him <laughs> judgment is you wouldn't like being with him and you can't be in his presence you would actually burn um, you wouldn't like being there they sing hymns and 
you probably wouldn't like the hymns if you like death metal or you know nine nine inch nails you you wouldn't like it there or or even um if if you have a a harsh personality they're not harsh there so you wouldn't like it or uh people that go there have sacrificed a lot they they understand jesus christ because in a lot of ways they have lived aspects in ways of, of their lives have been aspects of his there's something some kind of similarity there that allows them i'm not explaining it right but i have an understanding um so anyway, the flood occurred and it was out of mercy because these children were going to learn to be murderers and adulterers of very young ages, um, fornicators, all these things. And they would be, they would have no choice but to go to hell. They would hate to be with God. They, they couldn't be with God. And justice would, and so there are laws in the universe that wouldn't allow them even to be among God. God, at least among God or in heaven with all, with all the, the the people that are there, and and there is an advancement that that if you wish to read about, you can read more. Um, there's a lot of literature about it um, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints about progression. Our progression never ends as spirits, and and when we're reunited with our bodies, there is a resurrection of our body. And so then, and the reason that we become gods is because we are gods to our children and we have eternal families. It's not because we become more than our God, our father. We will never be more than our father. No child is more than their parent. No one is ever greater than their parent. And no one will ever be greater than Jesus Christ because he is also like a father to us and we are children to him. So we are gods because if you live your life righteously, then God in essence gives you the keys to the car and trusts you to raise up posterity. If when you do not, when you use the power that you're given and not to abuse people, and, and that's a lot what uh, marriage is and family is here, is, is proving that you will not abuse your, your power. So like a husband that has power over his wife and children and he abuses that in any degree, guess what? You're not getting the keys to the car. <laughs> that's just, that's it. Like you don't get a second chance with that. <laughs> she doesn't have to be with you and she can choose someone else to be with. Or it would be way better it, because, first of all, it doesn't have the stamp of the approval of Jesus, of the Holy Ghost. Like, that's just for starters. Like, you won't be able to go there because you're not sanctified. She would have to choose someone else because you abused your privileges. Amen. Like, story over. So, like, I'm tired of hearing from people just because you're married in the temple, like, for Latter-day Saints, does not mean that you will be with that person. You have to have a marriage that is celestial. You have to behave celestially. You cannot just mark the box. So give me a break. Like, that is not going to happen. You also have to mark the box. You can't act celestially and not do it in the temple so god sees that as rebellion like you have to do it in his temple so to marry outside the temple is seen as rebellion god told me that because i am not married and i have contemplated marrying people that are not members of the church and he has told me point blank that he sees that as rebellion so there's that and that's in Doctrine and Covenants, I think, 134. So anybody that's a member of the church, or even if you're not yet, like, become a member. And, and don't marry outside the church because God sees that as rebellion and it is not recognized. 
Oh, God does not recognize your marriage if it is not done in the temple. It is when when it when that when you die and the earth goes away, like so does your marriage. Sorry. End of story. <laughs> That's just what it is. Not only that, like I think there are trials coming as well that you're not going to be allowed even to practice like your your religion. So, but I, but God told me it's much more than that. From the scriptures, it's God just sees it as rebellion. And if oh, He brought to my mind just now, like look at David, King David. His kingdom was destroyed because of his rebellion. He had many wives. He chose to marry women that were of other kingdoms um, who were not um, Jewish, and they did not ha have the ability to, to make a covenant with him. And this was one of the paramount reasons that the kingdom was destroyed, the same with Solomon. So Solomon married also outside the covenant, and it was why um, the kingdom was destroyed almost exactly just as soon as he died, Solomon died, um, the kingdom was destroyed. That's what I read. 